Every model airplane that I've ever designed has had thin wings. I, I don't think I've ever uh, built anything that had more than a 10% thick airfoil. And on, on a full-size airplane, you know, general aviation, 13% thick, that, that's pretty normal. And that's okay, you know, they, they're much bigger, the air, it's easier to get the air to flow around the wing. But for a model, I will say, you, you want to try and, and be 10% or less thick. And, you know, there's pros and cons to having a thin wing. You know, this is my Piccolo design, which is pretty thin, you know, it's a very simple model. But one of the things that, that I've noticed with flying it is that you point the nose, the nose down and it picks up speed pretty quickly. And so you, you have to be you have to be careful with it. You know, don't don't let the speed get too high and you know and you mostly see that when you're turning. So you you know you wanna keep the, the nose fairly level. Um but that's okay because a side effect of that is that the model is also very good at dealing with wind because you know it's got a lot less drag than, than another model may have. So it can penetrate into wind and gust just, just don't affect it as much, even though it has a very low wind loading. Uh, and the reason why it's got the, the low wing loading is because of another side effect of a thin wing, which is a thin wing has trouble maintaining lift when the nose comes up. So bottom line is that it stalls earlier than a thicker airfoil. And, and that means it has a limited ability to slow down. But if the wing loading is low, then you're okay because they kind of balance each other out. And you know, when, when you look at a glider, they tend to have very thin wings and the reason why they have that is because a thinner wing has less drag so it's more efficient uh, but gliders tend to have low wing loadings anyway and, and it kind of balances out you know you, you don't you, you want you need to be careful if you have a, a model with a very thin wing and a high wing loading because that's what leads to very sharp and dangerous stalls so you need to stay away from that now Another downside of a thin wing is that it's harder making them strong. You know, you just don't have as much uh, height in the cord or to put the spars, and, and it's just a lot harder. So I had to get very creative with pickerel here. You know, a lot of the strength is being carried by uh, the leading edge and these this main spars that go across. So, so it definitely is a little bit harder. You know, you, you have to think a little bit more. You have to build more prototypes. But in the end, I ended up with a very light model that, that uh, on the one hand, is a floater. It can slow down very nicely. Uh, and of course, the, you know, the step vortex airfoil that I have on it helps with that too. But it has really good penetration. It can speed up when I want it to without too much trouble. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun to fly.